All right, what's up guys? Justin here. We got an exciting episode today for a couple reasons. Reason number one, as you can see above me, we're getting quite a ways with setting our trusses. So we're starting to have a roof on the house. It's starting to look more and more like a house every day. So that's pretty cool. The second thing that is exciting is that on this episode, we're gonna have you follow us along as we set one of the trusses and see what it's like. We've done, uh, I don't know, at least two thirds of them, maybe three quarters. So we're getting pretty fast. So this will be a good one to you to kind of uh, follow along. So that's why I'm wearing the GoPro. As you can see, some first person. We're also gonna be flying the drone around. We got boom lifts running, scissor lifts. It's gonna be exciting. Okay, let's go check it out. We'll come through this way and we'll go through the kitchen. We're now coming out the patio door and you can see this big machine here is one that we rented and it's been doing all the truss lifting for us. It's the uh, Snorkel TB86J, it has an 80 foot reach and it lifts 500 pounds. Okay, if you come around this way, you can see we've got our first, well not our first, but uh, one of our trusses already hooked up and ready to go. So if Sharon, you wanna come a little closer. Now wait, who's this guy up here? A lot of people have been wondering, who is this guy creeping around? We've seen him in some of the videos. This is my dad, that's Daryl. You may remember him as the previous owner of the Daryl Hammer. <laughs> okay, so coming back around this way, we've got this truss. You can see we've pre-installed our uh, roof deck edge blocking. Uh, you'll see how those go in a minute once we get up there, but it's just a little easier to pre-install that on the ground after we get it hanging from the lift. Okay, quick lift disclaimer. This is not really an approved use of a boom lift. However, these trusses weigh about 150 pounds. That is less than 200. And as you can see, there's a 500 pound limit. So we feel pretty good that uh, it's safe and it's, uh, haven't had any accidents yet. So, so far so good. All right, let's get started. We're gonna switch to GoPro and drone for aerial footage. Let's set this truss. All right, for this part of the video, I'm going to narrate it from the uh, editing studio here. It's a little hard to operate a drone, set a truss, and describe what you're doing at the same time, so this will be a little easier. Uh, anyway, at the beginning of this video, sorry it's a little jerky, you can see <clears throat> basically what happened, I had the uh, drone was in follow mode, I had it set to follow dad, and at this point since he was going straight up, it had a hard time figuring out which way he was going, so it was kind of zooming back and forth. But anyways, uh, in a second here, it'll, it'll kind of straighten out when I set it back to manual mode. So as far as the trusses go, you can see uh, the roof pitch across the top has a 412 pitch. And then as you can see, it has kind of a big square in the middle. That is for our attic. Uh, it's four feet high and eight feet wide. So it's not a very big attic, but since it's a small house, the um, space we'll get up there, we can use for a few things of mechanical equipment and we can use it for um, some storage as well. It's kind of long-term stuff that we have been keeping around but can't quite seem to get rid of either. So anyway, we'll be able to make good use out of that space. Uh, the other thing you may notice about the truss is that the heel, that's the part at the end, has um, it's almost two feet high at the heel. So the reason for that is that the uh, in order to get the forefoot in the attic space with a 412 pitch, um, to get more space we would have had to have a higher pitch, which we didn't want because then it makes doing the roofing harder. Uh, so in order to get that space without, um, it's just kind of the easiest way is to just raise the heel on the trusses. So the, the heel height, the kind of square end has almost a uh, two foot, comes up two feet before it starts the roof pitch. Okay, so we fast forward a little bit here. Now that uh, Dad's got the truss closer, so I can kind of describe what we're doing. Basically, um, he's uh, just kind of uh, lining it up for the last few few feet here. We could, I could grab one end, Sharon could grab the other end, and then we could kind of uh, land it on the top plate uh, next to the previous truss. Uh, pretty close, really, between the kind of slack and the, the ties from the top and um, just him positioning with the boom there we could we could usually end up kind of getting the truss to set down i guess i suppose within a half an inch or so on the top plate and then we could um, just kind of 
hammer it into position a little bit from there. So uh, it wasn't too hard really. I, I think the total time to kind of lift each truss and drag it over and set it down was really only maybe just about 10 minutes or so. So um, that's kind of uh, the, the process for getting the truss up there. Uh, you can see now we've got it in position and then um, at this point the next thing I'll do is uh, to start to nail it into place. Okay, so for this part, I've repositioned the drone. It's kind of hovering over the, uh, the slab now, and I'm about to set the next truss block. So because of that uh, oversized, like I mentioned, about a two foot high heel, the truss manufacturer made these uh, square blocks for us, which just kind of uh, makes the framing easier, I suppose, in order so we don't have to frame this part uh, manually or do anything kind of uh, different with the walls. Basically, after we set a truss, we grab our next truss block, get it positioned, and then um, just kind of uh, also just nail it down to the top plate and uh, to the previous truss. So these these kind of made it quite a bit easier. But um, anyway, it was uh, pretty easy. Got everything uh, nailed up, and then that was um, done with that one. From there, Dad would pick me up in the boom lift, and we would um, kind of work our way across the top nailing the, um, the the deck blocking that I mentioned was kind of pre-installed we would nail that to the previous truss and then install the um, kind of get everything nailed up on the opposite side just like you see me doing uh, on this side Alright guys, well, that wraps it up for this episode. Uh, it's pretty exciting, we got all the trusses on. You can see the house is looking a lot more like a house. It's uh, actually surprising, it's also looking a lot bigger. Uh, once we get those end gable walls on, it looks uh, looks like a pretty pretty nice big house. Uh, like, it, like we said, part of the reason for that is that we have this storage attic above. So if you follow me down to the attic, see kind of the full length of it here behind me so it's about four feet high eight feet wide so we can't walk around up here but we should have plenty of good room to store things so I think that covers it we will see you on the next one I suppose after this the next thing we'll start working on is we got to get the rest of the plywood around the uh, heel on the long walls and around the gable on the short walls and then after that we'll start putting the roof deck on so stay tuned, exciting times.